Hello everyone, this is a 1973 brown Lincoln that I circulated that is nicely toned and was sent from my collection. It's probably a 45 exceptionally fine condition. Both sides of the strike are sharp. On some spots, the original luster can still be visible in some fragments. The primary deterrent is this railroad rim's doubling on the collar, which is most likely the result of die misalignment. The 1973 Lincoln scent is a regular coin and is not regarded as special or precious. Since more than three billion of these coins were produced, they are widely available and can be bought for face value or a little more. How we are described by PCGs. They start to get scars at the leading price of $30, starting at mean state 66. It's far more challenging in mean state 67 to discover and is worth about $400. Above MS 67, an innocent specimen is rare and priced over $4,000. Regarding the PCGS price guide, the record auction date occurred in February 2022. On eBay, these MS67 plus red gems with strong red mint plaster sold for $3,916. We appreciate you watching this brief film. Remember that it summarizes. Do you wish to sell your coins, banknotes, stamps, and paper money online? On the coinass.com comma, you may post your adverts without charge. Using our coin as app to publish coin advertisements is considerably simpler for mobile consumers. I'm going to talk about an uncommon quarter in this video that you should avoid using. The price for this coin, a tiny quarter, was $41,975. So let's get right into this video south this quarter, without any further delay. The coin looks like a very typical quarter when seen from the reverse. This coin received a Mint State 66 grade from NGC, a third-party grading service. The highest earned double grade at this point is Mint State 70. It was essentially never in circulation when something was described as Mint State. Therefore, it's likely that this coin was once part of a collection before being rediscovered and sold for about $42,000 online. As a result, let's examine this coin more closely, as soon as you... Nothing appears to be excessively unusual after taking another glance at the coin's reverse. The image is not visible until you turn the coin over to the front. Actually, the front of this coin is absent. Two reverse dies are on it, this 25 cent undated. Washington Quarter is double trucked with two reverse dies and was given a mid-state 66 grade by NGC. Now listen, if you find this coin, you won't want to be taken advantage of, so pay closely. By cutting two coins in half and welding or gluing them together, some people attempt to replicate a coin like this. If anybody ever offers you this currency for a few hundred dollars, I would immediately flee unless you are aware of the signs of a genuine coin. That's also why it's crucial to have your coin graded by a third-party organization like NGC or PCGS in order to ensure that you get the full value of your coin if you sell it or avoid being duped and taken advantage of. When Purchasing You folks getting taken advantage of or conned is the last thing I want to happen to you. This is a real instance of this mistake. Since it was certified by NGC, they have a money-back guarantee. So if they unintentionally confiscate a fake or changed coin, which is extremely unlikely, they will receive their entire purchase price back. Therefore, you won't be without money. S. Frequently Asked Question How do I sell? A coin like this if I come across one. If you're brand new, my advice would be to consult at least three separate coin experts about your purchase. And if you're tech-savvy enough eBay might be a nice location to sell, or a business like Heritage, where this specific coin was sold at auction. My coin and currency mastermind class community is now active if you want to sell your coins for the highest money or get the best bargains while buying coins. For further details, click the link below. I'll see you inside. You might possess one of these exceedingly rare coins that just sold online for an unbelievable sum of money. Now, if you find a coin like this, you want to ensure that you receive the full amount of money and avoid being defrauded or taken advantage of. I'll demonstrate what to watch for and what to do if you encounter one in this video. So this 1944 coin, which is one of the rarest and most expensive coins in existence, has drawn collectors and Numi's interest. To save copper for the war effort, the U.S. Mint created penny coins in 1943 using zinc-coated steel. 
However, some of them were similar to this coin, which was graded by PCGs at a mince day 66. Coins were unintentionally produced in 1944 on this zinc-coated steel planche. What you need to know is that a 1944 penny shouldn't look like this and should instead be struck on a bronze planche. There is a very low probability that you have found a coin that will transform your life if it looks like this, meaning that you either have an altered or false coin. Due to the fact that this currency is an actual 1944 coin that was mistakenly struck at a zinc-coated steel mill, it sold for $408,000. That's true, this particular one here went for $504,000, and that's because it's the the other side of the prior coin. That is to say, this coin was unintentionally struck on a bronze planche when it should have been produced on a zinc-coated steel plant. This 1943 S-Coin has a mint state rating of 63 brown, according to PCGS. Let me quickly show you a diagram that illustrates the differences in color between a red, red, brown, and brown coin. This may occasionally be significant if a coin collector focuses on a specific coin kind. Due to the eye attraction, red coins are usually worth more. The 1943 coin cast on a bronze planter is an excellent example of not needing to. However, some collectors like coins that appear closer to their mint state intended condition, having a red coin, but a pricey coin as opposed to the opposite. Similar to this 1943 coin. Please keep it secure if you find one. Before you sell it, get the opinions of several other individuals since you might have a coin that is worth a lot of money. Like this one, which is valued over $504,000. I'll see you in the future video if you hit the subscribe button if you like this one. Hey there! Get ready for an exciting journey into the world of rare coins. Today we're exploring the story behind a remarkable penny that fetched a mind-blowing $120,000. This particular wheat penny hails all the way from 1917. That's over a century old. Graded by the esteemed experts at PCGs, it received a mint state 67 plus red. But what really sets it apart is its double dye oberst distinction. Now, the doubling might not be immediately obvious, but trust me, it's there. What makes this coin truly exceptional is the combination of its high grade and rarity. In fact, this particular specimen is the highest grade example ever recorded. So remember, folks, take good care of your coins and stay tuned for more exciting tales from the world of numismatics. I'm going to explain why this wheat penny sold for $120,000 in this video. This wheat penny, then, dates to 1917. Remember that 1909 was the first year the U.S. Mint ever began issuing wheat pennies? Therefore, this coin is quite old. The coin was then graded by PCGS, a third-party grading service, and they assigned it a Mint State 67 plus red rating. This coin is just a few points shy of the highest grade, which is 70, but the main factor in its high price is that it is a double-die Oberst coin. It is a little difficult to discern the doubling in this particular example, but the combination of this coin has a lot to offer because to its excellent grade and doubling. So let's enlarge these regions to see if we can spot the doubling. You're going to need some kind of magnification on cases like this to assist you see the doubling. To put it briefly, doubling is essentially a mint fault that can raise the value of some coins. Because it is the best grade example of this particular type ever known, this one sold for $120,000. Therefore, it's crucial to understand that keeping your coins safe won't harm them. The worth of the coin depends on it because even the slightest nick or scratch can lead it to lose a lot of money, especially in situations like such a coin. I have a totally free ebook down below if you want to learn more about handling, grading, and values of coins. However, you are under no obligation to do so. Simply complete your study and homework. I'll see you in the following video if you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. Hello, coin collectors! I have two 1968 Washington quarters in circulation, one from Philadelphia and the other from the U.S. Coins Collection. Both of them preferred a more refined condition, which included moderate wear on Washington's bust and several sizable contact marks on both sides, especially given that the president's face was slanted. The Philadelphian specimen's reverse side shows radial gouging, which is the most likely injury caused by a coin roll cramping machine. Circulated specimens, such as seeds, have no value at all. The 1968 Washington Quarter is not thought to be particularly precious or unusual. 
With over 471 million coins manufactured, it was widely produced. But each of the 67 conditions is extremely difficult to find, which makes these 67 examples worse. Approximately $160, based on the PCGS pricing guide. Since only 10 examples of this grade have been reported by PGGS Mississippi, 68 specimens are nearly unheard of. The cost of guiding begins at $2,800. According to PCGS, the most priceless specimen was sold in 2013. In Miss Day 68, this is the 1968 Washington Quarter. I have little, lost, or strong toning, and I have a good all-around appeal. At 30 auctions, this significant registry coin eventually sold for $9,400. Do you wish to sell your coins, banknotes, stamps, and paper money online? On the coinas.com comma, you may post your adverts without charge. Using our coin as app to publish coin advertisements is considerably simpler for mobile consumers. The Buffalo Nickel series was minted from 1913 to 1938 and mostly ended up in circulation. Nowadays, these coins are valuable collectibles. The 1935 Buffalo Nickel value can be high, particularly in pieces from Denver. However, it primarily depends on each coin's condition. Since nickels produced this year don't contain precious metal, worn-out pieces are often inexpensive, but collectors avoid them. Most prefer well-preserved specimens, including scarce ones in first-class grades, when their budget can cover such an option. The U.S. Mint produced silver half dizmies from 1792 to 1873, but the only way to prevent silver hoarding was the Cuperonical five-cent coin introduction in circulation in 1866. The reason was high silver prices that made melted coins more valuable than coinage. Indian head nickels, buffalo nickels, were the third type of these new coins appearing after the shield nickel, 1866 to 1883, and liberty head, V. Nickel, 1883 to 1913. It was also the last nickel coin design existing before the Jefferson nickel that occurred to stay by these days. This coin is still known by two names, thanks to a Native American depicted on the obverse and an American bison on the reverse. They appeared because 26th U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt considered American coinage ugly and without artistic value. He demanded an entire coinage replacement from the U.S. Mint, starting with the American Gold Coin Series in 1904. As for nickel, sculptor James Earl Fraser got the task of creating a new design suitable to replace the Liberty Head nickels. The first Buffalo nickels appeared in circulation on February 22, 1913. It was part of the ceremony in Staten Island, New York, when the National American Indian Memorial's foundation was laid. The first 40 coins were given to the Native American chiefs as a sign of respect. Unfortunately, the foundation was the only part of the memorial ever built and is not finished till today. The new coin design was beautiful but difficult to mint, and the dyes became worn out after a week, which was faster than usual. Besides, it was estimated that the date of minting an inscription five cents surviving during everyday use was impossible. Unfortunately, problems couldn't be solved even after the designer modified the original coin's look. Therefore, the Treasury hardly waited the required 25 years to replace it with the Jefferson Nickel series that has stayed actual by now. Buffalo nickels minted in 1935 look the same as other coins minted from 1913 to 1938. James Earl Fraser created both the obverse and reverse, replacing Barber's Liberty Head nickels, V nickels minted from 1883 to 1913. Americans liked their new coin, but many experts criticized its reverse design because it was impractical to mint. The Philadelphia Mint had the highest mintage, with 58,264,000 buffalo nickels minted in 1935. Therefore, most of these coins are affordable, and you can buy circulated ones for $0.45 cents to $15.50. Those in the mint state are more valuable, and their price depends on the preservation level. The 1,935 MS-67 Buffalo Nickel is often expensive, and you can find such pieces at $630 to $1,000 on the coin market. The most costly is a specimen in a higher grade, paid at an auction for $57,500. Do you have a 1951 dime and wonder about its potential worth? If so, you have come to the right place. Sometimes you can have a small fortune in your change without knowing it. 
The 1951 dime is also known as the Roosevelt dime because it features his bust on the obverse. Regarding the value, the 1951 dime is a silver coin, and when you have a coin made of precious metal, the value is higher than nickel or copper coins. In other words, even if it has a low grade, you can sell it for its worth in silver. Most collectors or those new to the field have issues with the coin grading system. The grading is highly important because it correlates with the coin's value, or in other words, is dependent on it. The condition is the key to determining the accurate value. The Roosevelt dime was first minted in 1946, soon after the death of Franklin Roosevelt, the 32nd president of the U.S. The president is best known for leading the country during trying times, the Great Depression and Second World War. As most know, Roosevelt suffered from polio, an infectious disease caused by the polio virus, and was paralyzed from the waist down. He was diagnosed with the disease in 1921, and during his career, he tried to raise awareness and combat polio. So, in 1938, he founded the non-profit organization March of Dimes, which also aims to improve the health of mothers and babies through various programs. After the president died on the 12th of April, 1945, placing him on the new dime design was the obvious choice. The Roosevelt dime replaced the Mercury dime, minted from 1916 to 1945. Following the death of the beloved president, the idea for a new coin design was immediately initiated. Considering that more than 25 years had passed since the Mercury dime was created and released into circulation, there was no need for congressional approval. Creating the new dime design was given to the longtime chief engraver John R. Sinek. As mentioned, the obverse features Roosevelt's bust facing left. On the left side of the coin is the capitalized inscription, Liberty. Underneath Roosevelt's truncated neck is the American motto, In God We Trust, on his left side. The reverse features a Roman torch at the coin's center, with two branches on each side. The left branch is an olive, while the one on the right is an oak, symbolizing peace and victory. The second American motto, E Pluribus Unum, is struck seemingly over the Roman torch and olive and oak branch or between the elements mentioned above in the following sequence, E asterisk PLU slash rib slash US asterisk U slash num. There were several complaints about the coin's reverse design when it entered circulation because it appeared too complex. Along the coin's upper rim is the inscription, United States of America. On the coin's lower center is the denomination one dime with a dot on each side. The 1951 dime was minted in San Francisco, Denver, and Philadelphia with the total quality produced, 192,096,602. The highest mintage was in Philadelphia, 103,880,102. However, even though it is a silver coin, it is small and does not weigh much. Its melt value is around $1.83. The dimes minted in Philadelphia do not have a mint mark. The value of the 1951 no mint mark dime in average or good condition is around $2.88, and it stays the same even for higher grades, such as fine, extra fine, or about circulated. Professional Coin Grading Service, PCGs, says these can fetch a modest price in high mint states, starting with MS-65. The 1951 no mint mark dime in MS-65 can cost between $11 and $35. According to the Numismatic Guarantee Company, NGC, the 1951 dime in MS-65 without the mint mark is $18.